Mavis during the virus. Thanks to Michael J who texted in earlier to say Mavis is the greatest. I laugh so much. Honestly, I'm out of gas after listening to her. Well, gas yourself up, mate, because she's going to be here. With lockdown part two upon us, Mavis returns with her latest thoughts upon the world and what happened during the virus. I never really finished talking about how that was during the virus, because that was always going on. Ideas from Boris and all that lot would come and go. That was always changing. But we'd go along with whatever he say next. And after all them tears, <laughs> not them kind of tears, fellas, you silly old. Tier one, tier two, tier three, he finally announced on Halloween that there was going to be another lockdown. Mm. Would you believe it? Two lockdowns. We weren't sure if that was going to be the same as that was before, though. The nights are getting longer and colder. We weren't sure if we were even allowed to give any of the little ones any opal fruits or sherbets for the trick-or-treating for Halloween. Mm. That's right, Phyllis don't care too much for Halloween. She give out her own treats, but, but really that's a trick, cos she wrap up a sprout in foil and cellophane and make it look like one of them Lindor chocolates. <laughs> Poor little old things. Well, I think that's an exciting time of year for pumpkins and jack of taters and ghost stories. But Phyllis, she think Halloween it's a bit too American, so that don't count. Well, America's been doing a lot of counting this week. <laughs> dear, oh dear. I do like that young Joe Biden boy. I bet he's been biding his time with all this. <laughs> he done ever so well. Mm -hmm. Shut up, Phyllis. Fake news, she say. Your fake news? That horrid old orange man. Dear, oh dear. Dear, such a hoo-hoo between the red one and the blue one. Well, that take your mind off of Boris for a bit anyway. <laughs> then come bonfire night. Except that was the first day of lockdown too, so we weren't sure what we were supposed to do. Horace, he had a grut old bonfire as he always do. We still weren't sure about who was in what bubble. And, and what was allowed anymore. So just to be safe, we tied a few tomato sticks together with some old tights and put a marshmallow at the end of it and carefully lowered it over the fence, over Dillis's garden, into the bonfire at Horace and Joan's. Joan would shout when that was done and then we ever so carefully hoisted it back and ate it. I heard Dillis come out too because as she lived in the house in between and I think she was waiting for any marshmallows that didn't make it back. <laughs> that was like using one of them one of them claw machines at Felix Day, wasn't it, Phyllis? <laughs> there weren't much going on in the way of fireworks, though. I had a look out the window later on, but there was just a few of them disappointing ones. You know, them ones will just go... And then they're gone. So we decided to dig out some old VHS tapes of firework displays from down the wreck and Havel, what Phyllis had videoed on her camcorder years ago. And I think Doris had a lovely slideshow of photos of fireworks, what she'd taken off the telly from New Year's Eve. And I dare say we were all a little bit warmer than what we would have been if we'd have been outside freezing our brassicas off. <laughs> yeah. Christmas next. It is indeed, Mavis. It will be Christmas next. Mavis, during the virus lockdown too. Uh